trying to think about the feeling that I'm having rather than some of the experiences that you remind me of. The Are you visceral... saying to us that you don't know the difference between feeling better or worse, feeling good or bad? I'm talking about what over intellectualizing, overthinking. Give us an example. <laughs> In the rampage that you just did, I felt heat and expansion in my chest and abdomen. So we enticed you into a focus that aligned you with source. And our encouragement to you is that you become a better enticer of self. Esther will say to Jerry, tell me a story. And what she means is ramble so that all I have to do is listen. And by listening to what you say, I will feel better. And Jerry always obliges, or nearly always. He'll tell her a story that is comforting or pleasing, you see. And then he grins at her as he now wants a story from her. <laughs> In other words, and we want you to tell the stories. We can entice you into alignment because we are where that part of you is. And we can shine the light and we can offer the words and we can know so clearly the success that is yours that we can influence you into that alignment. And it's helpful to have someone here in physical form being a satellite dish to beam you into alignment. We get that. That's why we're here. That's why Esther is here. That's what this is all about. But we are here to teach the self-empowerment of getting a hold of your own signal and beaming yourself into alignment. And so if we were standing in your physical shoes, we would stop the protesting of how hard it is. And we would embellish the fact that the signal is there. We would acknowledge that on some subjects it's easier for me to line up than on others. And on the subjects that it's easy for, do it often. And that's what we meant, start with something easier. Okay. Convince yourself in your ability to focus. Focusing is what it's about. Feeling is the response to the focus. But you could focus on the feeling you want to achieve. In other words, you could be in despair and say, this sucks. I don't like being in despair. I would be better off if I were angry about it. And then you could deliberately reach for angry thoughts. You could say, okay, now I'm shooting for angry thoughts. And you'll find them right away. And then you could say, okay, the angry thoughts are not feeling as good as they once did. Esther left because there were some television programs that she watched during the time of the elections that made her feel better because she felt powerless and these outrageous platforms were sort of speaking the voice that she was wishing that others would hear and it made her feel better to hear those voices. But it wasn't long as she focused there that that stopped being downstream for her. In other words, it was downstream from where she was, but it was upstream on most other subjects and aspects of her life. So it stopped being appealing, and that's what you have to keep remembering, because who you really are is way downstream. You're going to constantly be in the act of deciding upstream, downstream. You're never going to get to the place that you won't have to think about that or feel about that. This alignment with source is not like a college degree where once you achieve it, it is yours forevermore. It either is or it isn't in the moment, depending upon what's active within you, you see. So at a minimum, we would make the decision that we're no longer going to have conversations about things that always make you upset. Esther and Jerry spend most of their time in a 45-foot bus. Esther is usually driving, and Jerry is moving about or, or working on something. And every now and again, Esther will want to tell Jerry something, but he's out of earshot. So for a while, she was honking the horn to get his attention. <laughs> but it was frightening other drivers off into the bushes. It's a very loud horn. And so... Esther found a button that when she pushes it, it makes all the lights in the bus come on. And when she pushes it again, it makes all the lights in the bus go off. And so no matter where Jerry is, no matter what he is doing, no matter where he is, Esther has him by the button. And so <laughs> he stops whatever it is he is doing, and he makes his way to the front of the bus. And he'll say, yes, you had something you wanted to say. And Esther says, oh, never mind, it was upstream. And we say, isn't it nice that he wasn't sitting right there next to her? Because if it had been sitting right there, she would have just blurted it out. And as she blurted it out, if he agreed with her, it would have been more upstream for her. And if he disagreed with her, it would have been more upstream for her. In other words, 
aren't you in that impossible situation where if, when someone is upstream and you go along with them, you just embellish their upstream momentum. And if you disagree and try to drag them downstream against their will, they just cling to their upstream ideas all the more. And so what we're getting at is if we were standing in your physical shoes and we found subjects that are uncomfortable to us, we would make a decision. I'm just not going to talk about that anymore. I'm not going to talk about it and I'm going to do my best not to think about it. But meanwhile, you want to begin to diffuse it. When something happens, it is active in your vibration. And for you to pretend that it isn't real or that it didn't happen activates another thing within you about not being honest or not being true or not facing reality. What we want you to do is create reality rather than face reality. We want you to understand that reality is always in motion. It's moldable from wherever you are, you see. So here's the answer. You care more about how you feel than all other things put together. How you feel matters most. Not what happened, not what's true, not what the reality of it is, not even what the reality is in relationship with what you prefer. All of that is irrelevant. The only thing that is relevant is how you feel because how you feel is about closing the gap or not, you see. So we love having this discussion with you. I can't tell if I'm thinking and then feeling or feeling and then thinking. Someone said to us not long ago, feels like my thoughts are thinking me. And we say, well, then it's time for you to get hold of your thoughts because your thoughts aren't thinking you. It's just that some thoughts you've thought so long and so often that they are very active within you. And so law of attraction is just bringing you all kinds of things that match those. But you have control of your thoughts. It is the way you think that molds the clay of your life experience, you see. And and we liked your introduction to us. I'm just another person that's going to sit here and complain about what is. And we understand that because what is has your undivided attention in most cases. But we want you to get your eye on where you're going and therefore off of where you are. And when you start looking at where you're going instead of where you are, then you go with such ease because your inner being is already over there where you're going. When you start looking in the direction of where you're going rather than talking about where you are, the resistance lifts off of you right away and you begin moving, you see. Thank you for restating all of that for me. Well, we are appreciating the vibration that we feel within you because we want you to know that this feeling of stuckness is really minor in relationship to the power of the stream. So many of you, as you're focusing more upon what you want, you are allowing your stream to move faster and faster, which means those old habits of thought are becoming a bigger problem to you. In other words, Esther is not thinking more negative thoughts today than she has been thinking before. Esther is, for the most part, a very positive person. But what's happening is the momentum of the energy that is about her life and work is moving so rapidly that a little bit of negative thought goes a very long way in that kind of a current, you see. And so that's what's happening to all of you. This is why we are calling this the time of awakening. We have never seen the energy of your planet moving so rapidly, which means whatever the direction of your thought, this momentum of the stream is having a big effect. This is not Disneyland and this river cannot be turned off or slowed down. This river is moving at the speed that it is and you must get into alignment with it if you are to live the joyous life you have intended to live. Now you can get cross current of it and it can beat you up, it can plug up your head, it can make your foot hurt. You can get cross current of it and you can get run over by a truck. You can get cross current of it and you can live a miserable life. Most people don't really get into the flow of this powerful stream and until the day they crawl. Talk about a quantum leap. In other words, you in that one fell swoop, you withdraw all of your attention from the things that have been bothering you and in the injustices of the world, and in one fell swoop, you come into vibrational alignment with who you are. And oh, the party of celebration that you have as you come into alignment. This gathering is about helping you come into alignment before you croak. Nothing should ever bother you, because nothing, nothing in the world is wrong. Now, we know that that would cause outrage. If the majority of the world were to hear those words from us, Jerry and Esther, so don't tell them, would get endless emails, <laughs> endless emails pointing out, look what's wrong here and look what's wrong here and look what's wrong here and look what's wrong here. And we're not saying that there are not people who are withholding themselves from the stream of well-being. And we're not saying ever that that's a pleasant state of being. And we could spend the rest of your lifetime and 20 or 30 beyond that explaining how it is that people get into that place of resistance as they pass it on from generation to generation, as they get caught up in the injustices of life and the pushing against of others and use one thing after another as their excuse to not let the energy flow. But the truth of it is that your life causes you to be more. And if you don't go ahead and be more, you don't feel good. That is the story, you see. You've just got to stay up to speed with who you are.
You got to. And then the money comes. But don't stay up to speed to get the money. Stay up to speed because nothing else is natural. It's not normal for me to not feel good. That is not normal. It's not natural for me to feel unworthy or for me to feel unloved or for me to feel that injustice has happened. It's not normal for me. And if I want to know what's normal, then reach for what my inner being feels. Inner being, how do you feel about situations on the earth how do you feel about this specific situation how do you feel and if you will ask that question and listen your source will show you how it feels your source will tell you again and again it's not your job to sort it all out it's not your job to decide the rights and the wrongs of the world it is only your job to give birth to your own individual rockets of desires and find alignment with them and when you do heaven and earth will move into place to accommodate you you're in competition with no one for resources. You're in competition with no one for anything. There's just that gap between you and you that you have constant facility to accommodate or not, to align or not. That's all there is. Should money come to you? Yes, and it has. Should you let it in? Yes, whenever you want. Will you know when you're letting it in more? Yes, because you'll feel more hopeful and more believing. Will you know when you're holding it away? Yes, because you'll feel honoring and questioning of the laws or of your ability. Will you know when you're closer? Yes, because you'll feel the momentum of it and you'll begin to feel enthusiasm. When you shift from hope to enthusiasm, it's on your doorstep. When you're angry or frustrated, it's a ways off. When you are in despair, it's a long way off. But we're not talking about a long way in terms of time. We're talking a long way in terms of vibrational alignment. Vibrational alignment can happen in a minute. Vibrational alignment can happen in a second. Vibrational alignment might take all day. There might be something stuck in your craw, and you might work on it, and it might take all day. Or you might work on it and almost get there, and then tomorrow you might go back and start beating the same drum and, and get yourself into a disconnected place. It's all your option, you see. But until you say, nothing is more important than that I feel good, and once I feel good, I'm in alignment, and when I'm in alignment, then all the stuff comes. People say, oh, Abraham, let's see. So you say, step one is ask. I've done that like a million times. Step two is source answers. I'm taking you at your word. I believe that you've given me our fortune. Step three says, let it in. And then physical friends say, there's something screwy in this because I have asked, and if you say it has been given, then where is my stuff? Where is it? And we say, it's waiting for your alignment. And your alignment is noted by your feeling. Alignment feels good. The visceral feeling, that's the way I think about it. Well, that's why we call them feelings, not thinkings. <laughs> feeling, feeling. I bit my finger and it feels bad. It feels really bad. That's a feeling. Now I'm thinking about how bad that feels. 